Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things Plays. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today the Nintendo Switch is out. I have my pre-ordered copy here along with some other accessories, and I just wanted to give a kind of brief overview of the hardware. This isn't a review at all. I haven't really had much time to play yet. I've been doing some Breath of the Wild gameplay videos. You can check those out on the channel. But maybe in a week or two, I will give you my pseudo review, pseudo impressions of all the Switch hardware and everything. I can tell you right now that so far I'm enjoying it a lot. But I picked up a Switch. I also picked up an extra set of Joy-Con. I picked up the Pro Controller. I got The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And I also got this Nintendo Switch case by Hori. So I think we'll take a closer look at all of these. You'll just see what you get when you get the Switch, some of these other accessories. We're not doing box openings. There are plenty of those on YouTube as it is. But uh, join me on this wonderful mystical journey as we look at these Switch and the Switch accessories. Um, I've been waiting for this for quite some time. It's the first main Nintendo console I have owned since, well, I briefly had the Wii, but just very briefly. I just bought it to, to play Super Mario Galaxy. Um, so basically since the GameCube. So I'm looking forward to this a lot. Let's check it out. So I'm sure you've heard that expression, in for a penny, in for a pound. I kind of went a little crazy with this Switch launch. I knew I wanted the console, faux show. I also knew I wanted the Pro Controller, faux show. And I also knew I wanted another set of Joy-Cons because I figured of multiplayer uses, things like that. I want to get uh, Mario Kart 8 when it comes out eventually. I never got to play that on Wii U. So I wanted to have other options for local multiplayer. So now I have basically one, two, and then with the Joy-Con that came with the Switch, three full controllers, and then way more if you break the Joy-Con apart and use them individually. And then I also wanted a carrying case for the Switch, which I got here from Hori. So lots of things. So let's take a look at all this. But let's actually start with some of the accessories I've gotten and then we'll move on to the console itself. First of all, I got a second pair of Joy-Con and I ordered them in the neon red. And here they are. They look kind of orange on camera sometimes or sometimes they look a little more pink. In real life, they're definitely red, but they are definitely very neon, maybe with a slightly sort of salmon cast to them, but they're very striking. You can't miss them. But I thought, you know, mix it up a little bit. Um, they are very small. My hands here, let me give you an idea of how big my hands are, because people always talk about this, like how does it fit my hand? How does it fit your hand? Well, it would help if you have some sort of frame of reference. I have pretty big hands, and when I measure from the tip of my thumb to the tip of my pinky, I am about nine and three quarters inches is my hand span, I guess. So that's pretty big. Um, when I'm holding these babies, I don't find them too small. So in spite of my larger than average hands, um, they don't feel like they're undersized, especially when using them like this. If I, I've been playing uh, Legend of Zelda a little bit like this and manipulating both like obviously using this for movement and then using the triggers and the buttons it works just fine in terms of the build quality on these i'm really impressed they're light but they don't feel cheap they don't feel chintzy um, i like the feedback the clickiness of the sticks is very nice the travel isn't as much as you would get from you know a normally sized analog stick but it still works quite well if i've been playing legend of zelda with these detached I have not felt at all as though I'm not getting a real good experience with a controller. It doesn't even really occur to me to think about what I'm using, other than the fact that it's kind of cool to be able to have my hands down at my sides. Um, people have talked about the left Joy-Con desyncing occasionally, and then maybe it was fixed with an update, the day one update. I haven't had any issue at all, but I am much closer to my TV. I'm probably only about six feet from my TV and from the Switch when I'm playing, so that might have something to do with it. But anyway, I've had no issues. And then we also have the actual gray Joy-Con that came with my Switch. Just as a comparison, um, you can see how much more... Actually, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but they're, the neon red is quite bright. And then we also have the Joy-Con grip that came with the Switch. This is the non-charging version. People were freaking out about that, which I don't understand at all because you can charge the Joy-Con on your actual Switch tablet when the tablet is docked. 
and that's just what I do. I have my Joy-Con on my tablet, I put my tablet in my dock, I play on my TV with my Pro Controller, and then if I want to take the Switch on the go, I take the Joy-Con, the Joy-Con are on the tablet, I take the tablet off, they're fully charged, they last for over 20 hours, so it's been fine. But let's just snap these into here. Let's use one of each. Now I haven't really played much using this as a controller. Um, some people talked about, oh, their fingers touch each other around the back because it's too small, but that's not the case with me because I hold on like this. I don't have any issue with that. Um, it works. I could see this working just as well as holding, uh, using the two Joy-Con actually attached to the Switch console itself. But like I said, I haven't delved into this too much. One other thing I wanted to point out, I haven't really at all played using these controllers like this, um, but they do come with these straps and it is very important to line up the two plus marks here. Don't try to put this on with the minus mark. It's, there's a plus and a minus. Make sure the plus is facing, you slide it on, and then you can lock it here. And now it won't come off. I think some people were putting them on upside down and then they're getting stuck. So don't do that. But uh, this definitely gives you a little more grip. I'm going to have a friend over soon and we're going to try out snipper clips. And so I might be using a controller like this. Again, with my big hands, it seems to work okay. But we'll see. In the coming weeks, I'll give an actual real overview of the hardware and how it's been holding up. But so far, so good with the Joy-Con. Here we have the Pro Controller. I have been using this quite a bit to play Zelda Breath of the Wild. And I have to say, it is a nice controller. It feels quite good. Nice, good D-pad. That's one place where the actual Joy-Con fall down because they have to make them basically two separate controllers. They couldn't have a unified D-pad. They had to have these as actual separate buttons. Um, this works great. This is a nice clicky D-pad, nice clicky analog sticks, a lot of good travel. I like the triggers here. These would be great for first person shooters, I would think, because they have such an immediate immediacy when you hit them. They're not analog though, so that's an issue for some games, I guess, especially racing games and things like that. Um, but all in all, I think it's a very comfortable, very ergonomic controller. I like these big face buttons. Just to compare it in size, you can see an Xbox One controller is a bit bigger. Um, Xbox, One, Xbox One controller definitely feels heavier to me. But this is by no means light. Um, again, doesn't feel cheap. Feels like good build quality. I like it. I've been enjoying it. And it has this nice kind of grippy texture here. So again, so far so good for the Pro Controller. Next is the Nintendo Switch Dock. And it's nothing too exciting really. It's just basically a hunk of plastic. Um, the Switch Dock's inside there. There's the USB-C where it plugs in. And in the back here, you have a slot for the AC adapter, the USB, um, and HDMI out. So you have nice cable management back there. Um, you know, it's, I wouldn't call it cheap looking, but it's definitely not the same kind of sort of industrial design, almost Apple-like quality that the main device has, but it's functional, it works. Some people have said that they are scratching the front of their switch um, when they dock it, and not on the actual screen, but sort of on the bezel. So I was looking in here, and I don't know if you can see, but there are these little raised sections, and I'm wondering if maybe if the molded plastic just had some ridges or something on their particular model, if that's what was doing it. I'm feeling mine is perfectly smooth, so maybe if people are having any of those issues, I don't know, maybe they can sand it out or something. But for me, I haven't had that issue, and these feel nice and smooth. But there you go, the dock, purely functional, not too exciting. Um, I am surprised by just how small all of this is in general, the entire console and everything else. It's very small. Look at that. That's small. Now this case I got from Hori, it's called the Hori Tough Pouch, and eh, it's fine. Again, I haven't had it long enough to really give you a good idea of my opinion of it, but the switch sits in there, keeps it fairly secure. It does kind of rattle a little bit when inside. And it has a little flap for cartridges, and I guess you could put a USB-C cable or something in there. I'm looking into some other cases. This one's pretty bare bones, but it'll do the job for now. Now here's a look at the game case. This is for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, obviously. 
Um, again, pretty small. It's almost maybe the same height as like a PS4 case, but obviously not as wide. Um, you open it up, nice cover art by the way, and you have nothing inside other than another nice piece of art and a tiny little game card, basically the same size as an SD card, maybe a little fatter. And you can see this up close, not a lot of room for art on there, but that's it, that's your game card. And I think they make these up to 32 gigs right now. Um, obviously that could probably get larger as time goes on, but I think Zelda's around 13 gigs. So for now, there aren't really any Switch games that are too big to put on a card. And I think I'll mostly be buying retail games um, with cards. I just like the convenience of it. You put them in and you can play. You don't have to download for hours and hours. You play with discs, PS4, things like that. You put your game in and there's like an hour and a half, two hours of downloading updates and installing the game. Not so with this. You pop it in, you play, it's cool. And now the actual Switch unit itself. You're gonna see me, you're gonna see the camera reflected in the screen. Not much I can do about that. And you're also gonna see a bunch of horrible bubbles. I put a really cheap and really crappy screen protector on here until I get one that I actually like. It's just a stopgap. When the actual console is on, you can't really see those bubbles. But this thing is again, very small. Um, it does not cover my entire hand. You can still see my fingers poking out there. It is reasonably light, but it feels sort of dense, compact. Um, you look around, you'll see USB-C on the bottom. You have your kickstand here. Underneath the kickstand, you have a slot for your SD card, micro SD card. I have a mi micro SD XC, a 200 gig card. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, kickstand has worked fine for me so far. People talk about it being flimsy. I have not had any issue with it. Um, I'm shaking the table. Imagine that's turbulence in an airplane. It's been fine, whatever. The top of the device has the power button, volume rocker, a grill for exhaust, heat exhaust, and then a cartridge slot or a card slot. These aren't cartridges, they're cards and a headphone jack. And then you have the rails on the side for your Joy-Con. Speaking of which, let's slip those in. We'll use the red ones. Actually, let me actually turn this on. I think these ones are synced to the console right now, so we'll press the home button. And there you go, and you press three buttons. That unlocks it. The software was closed because the game card was removed. Okay, now look at this. We'll click these Joy-Con on. <laughs> very, very satisfying. And there you go. So this is the form factor of the console, the tablet plus the Joy-Con. You can see a little bit of the UI here. I have the black theme going. Only three games so far that I purchased. I've got Zelda, I've got Snipper Clips, and I've got Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Um, but there you go. It's very portable in my opinion. Again, people talk about whether or not you can fit it in your pocket. I've had a 3DS, a 3DS XL, not once has it ever occurred to me to put it in my pocket. I put it in a case and I put it in a bag. That's just always the way I transport consoles. So this is definitely the same. You're not sh shoving this in your pocket, especially if you have pockets as tight as mine and pants as tight as mine. Maybe if you wear giant cargo pants or ill-fitting clothing, you could perhaps take the Joy-Con off, shove the tablet in one pocket and the Joy-Con in another. I don't know. I don't know why you would necessarily, but uh, to me, it's not necessarily pocketable, but I don't think that makes it unportable. Shove the card in here. Easy as that, Zelda's ready. So far, I've just been very impressed with the way this feels. It feels like a really well-made quality device. For Nintendo, that's not always the case. Sometimes their things feel a little cheap, a little kitty, kind of, not kitty, like meow, like kitty, like ma ma ma. Um, like a Fisher Price toy, a lot of people have used that expression to describe the Wii U, for instance, the Wii 2, just kind of cheap molded plastic. This feels more like a consumer electronic device. It feels sturdy, it feels well made, and I really like it. I'm really impressed with the hardware so far and the functionality. And one other thing I wanted to mention um, when playing Shovel Knight, one of the main things that I was sort of unsure about with the Nintendo Switch was the fact that there was no real D-pad on the left Joy-Con. Obviously that's a sacrifice they had to make, 
but I was really worried that if I tried to play this system portable, I would not really be able to play 2D platforming games like Shovel Knight. But I have discovered when playing Shovel Knight, there's my amiibo, or my Wii, my me, whatever the hell it's called. Hey, how's it going? Um, one thing I've discovered when playing Shovel Knight is that it kind of works with the analog stick. And I didn't expect that at all. I don't know if it's just Shovel Knight itself has been sort of optimized maybe to use that or to take advantage of it. But just to show you very briefly, uh -oh, we've got Baz. Um, this isn't the best level to show you using the analog stick and I'm trying to play through the tripod and the viewfinder, but anyway, all right, Baz, come on, buddy. Um, I haven't noticed any like analog lag or anything. It actually kind of works. I've been playing the game with the analog stick, which I just didn't think I was going to do. This is horrible. I can't do this right now. I'm trying to play this through the tripod. But anyway, it works. I don't know if that's going to be the case with other 2D side scrolly games, platformy games. Oops. But, uh, it kind of works for Shovel Knight. I'm sure people are going to disagree with me with that, about that, but so far so good. Obviously, I would still kind of prefer using it with the Pro Controller, but for being out and about, I haven't really had an issue playing Shovel Knight with the analog stick. So that's something to consider. We're not going to get into all the hardware and everything, how the UI works and stuff in this video. I just wanted to give you a brief overview. We're just going to put this into sleep mode now. But suffice to say, I'm impressed. I think it's a good system. I think the hardware is of good quality and I'm enjoying it so far. So there you go, a brief overview of the Nintendo Switch, its hardware, and some of the accessories that you can purchase for it. I've really been enjoying using it so far and really loving playing Zelda, obviously. But in the coming weeks, stay tuned because I will do a more in-depth overview of the hardware, maybe a mini review of the hardware. I still don't really feel comfortable, even in a couple weeks time, reviewing the hardware until it has everything until the paid online service is launched, until there are more titles out so we can see what it can do with different kinds of software. So they'll just be kind of my continuing impressions as I get more of a chance to fool around with this thing. But as I said, so far, so good. And also stay tuned to the Stuff and Things Plays channel because I will have more gameplay videos, definitely from Breath of the Wild, yoink, and some other Switch games as well. Spectre of Torment DLC is out for Shovel Knight. I'm going to be delving into that as well. So. Stay tuned, more good stuff on the way. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been your good friend Bradley, you've been the audience, and this has been Stuff and Things, taking a look at the Nintendo Switch hardware and some of its accessories. I'll see you later.